AI in a contact center, how is it applied today? And how does it improve the customer experience, but also reduce the workload of your teams? And also, what can we expect in 2022? Callan Sabella is the Executive Vice President of Product Management at Five9, and he's here to share the latest AI developments in contact centers. Welcome, Callan. Hello. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So AI is applied in basically any industry and, and drives, I think, significant transformation. Can you share how AI is applied in contact centers and, and what's the impact? Right. Well, uh... I guess today AI is applied in almost every aspect of the contact center. Uh, you know, just a, a few sort of key themes, I guess, in the industry or the sector, you have AI for full uh, contact automation. So rather rather than engaging with a with a person on the end of a chat or on the end of a phone call, you're instead engaging with a, a full software agent, often referred to as an intelligent virtual agent. Uh, and to that end, it's all you know, AI. So it's natural language processing, speech recognition, text to speech are sort of the engines that, that power those experiences and all of those uh, are influenced directly you know through AI models um, if you if you're talking about more of a traditional interaction between a conversation between a, an agent in a contact center and a, and a customer whether that be chat or uh, you know a phone call or whatever um, we also have AI appearing in agent assist style um, modes where the AI is essentially listening to the conversation between the two parties and is suggesting things to, to the agent in real time. And it's not just about you know, suggesting information to the agent like, oh, they're asking about their account, so let's bring up their account automatically on the screen for the agent to use. We're also in the area now of like behavioral feedback, like the agent is, you're speaking too softly, you're speaking too quickly. I feel you should empathize with the caller at this point. Um, and, and, and so on. So there's a there's a lot of influence there. And then, you know, in the third big category would it be everything to do with the analytics um, after the fact. So how do you predict, uh, for example, how many agents you're going to need uh, on Cyber Monday or, or, or how, do, how, you know, when open enrollment in healthcare uh, happens in the US or in its tax time uh, in another part of the world, how many agents will they need? They use AI models to model all of this uh, for predictions. Um, so those would be sort of the three main areas, uh, full self-service, agent assistance, and then analytics uh, as a third category. Yeah, basically every aspect, and especially in the communication part, it has, has quite some impact. And 5.9 talks about this digital workforce. Can you explain what it is and what the role of AI in this case? Sure. So if you if you look at sort of an existing or a typical contact center, you've got a, you've got a team of agents. They may be working in a in a building. They may be working offshore. Uh, they may be working from home you know, these days, which is obviously you know more frequent. the the ch The choices that a, an organization has on as as customer care increases is: Do I just go out and hire more agents? And if I do, where do I put them? And this is becoming increasingly difficult with the, things like the great resignation, uh, the cost of labor, um, a, a, a preference for self-service and a whole range of things. So rather just the, just continually expand that pool of agents, the, the idea of a digital workforce is you expand that with software agents that sit virtually alongside those human agents. So within a contact center, you know, at 5.9, you might have say 500 human agents, but you may have 100 intelligent virtual agents and they are essentially doing these full self-service automation um, activities for you. And the idea is not to sort of n not have a need for human agents, but to just change the type of work that those human agents are doing. If you think of a typical contact center, the, the, the customer care is sort of like a pyramid. You have a very large uh, volume of effectively low value interactions to the business and a very small number of very high value interactions. You want your human workforce working on those high value interactions at the top of that pyramid, and you want your intelligent virtual agents working on uh, you know, the, the base of that pyramid. You know, things that think of things such as you know, tracking parcels, changing addresses, um, doing surveys, all of these things are entirely uh, can entirely be done with automation these days. A great, great development. Um, I also read a recent article where you launched a new type of capability. Can you tell me more about the custom voice avatars? Sure. So uh, essentially, when you're working in sort of the intelligent virtual agent space, you need to give 
your virtual agent uh, a voice. And traditionally, these voices have come from what they call text-to-speech engines. And there are plenty of providers of text-to-speech engines out there today, from you know, Google to, to IBM to Amazon and LumenVox, Nuance, and others. Um, what we what we find working with you know many hundreds of customers is that there is still a uh, an unhappiness, a general sort of yeah, unhappiness, I guess, from from customers that the the voices that they get access to are not as lifelike as they would you know they would like, uh, and that it is really quite easy to tell the difference between a, a text to speech engine and a, and a human voice actor. So what we've announced recently with a virtual voiceover technology is the ability to use a very new approach in synthesizing human speech, um, essentially a very high resolution. Uh, but with, with, with high compute as well, uh, synthesized voice that is virtually indistinguishable from the human actor. Uh, so the company that we have partnered with uh, to do this is a company called Well Said Labs. Uh, and within Studio Today, which is our service creation environment for building these IBAs, um, you can essentially synthesize in one of 25 different voice avatars. They all have names. Um, so you can literally say, I'd like to be in the voice of Wade, or I'd like to be in the voice of Ava or, or whatever. Um, and then when you when you generate um, content using those voices, it essentially sounds just like the actor. Uh, but the the other thing about that technology is that it also opens the door to allow you to pick your own voice talent and produce a custom voice that is unique to your organization uh, and use that within our within our five nine studio environment as well. So if you had a particular voice talent that you wanted, you could have them spend a couple of hours in a studio. They essentially record a set of training phrases, and then you can synthesize that voice, basically saying uh, whatever it is that you would like. And this is a huge uh, improvement in terms of the, um, the, 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 the liveliness, if you like, of, of the actual voice itself. But also, it opens up a whole range of things, like I don't have to get that talent back into a studio in six months' time. I can just synthesize what I need them to say using this sort of well said labs type technology. Amazing, amazing developments. If we look to the developments in, in the domain of AI, they're following each other at rapid pace. So what AI developments do you expect in the contact centers in 2022? I think a lot of what we're going to see in 2022 is in the area of um, advisory style services, right? So there is so many um, opportunities to use uh, AI techniques inside uh, the contact center today. The challenge that a lot of people have is sort of like, where should I start? Uh, and once I have AI, uh, how do I know that it's working for me? Um, this is one of the, the, the challenges in selling sort of AI-based systems is, is like, oh, just tell me everything it knows. Well, actually, that's really hard to do. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to, to tell you every single thing um, that an AI system understands in any sort of meaningful way that, I, you know, I, I can communicate that to you. So advisory type services, um, I think, are going to be really important. Um, and then uh, analytic service that measures the effectiveness of AI communications as well. Often when you see technologies like this that are like fundamentally, you know, changing an industry, uh, you go through this sort of hype, you know, hype cycle and, and you get a lot of implementations very, very quickly. Um, and then a lot of sort of, um, as a result, a lot of vendors and a lot of poor implementations as well. So you go through that process where, okay, um, how do I know that the, the partner that I'm engaged with is actually producing for me a solution that is a quality solution that is actually improving my brand and not sort of damaging it? So I expect to see a lot of that, that stuff in 2022. Yeah, amazing developments. And the, the AI contact center becomes totally AI driven. And I think that's a, that's a great development, especially from an efficiency perspective. Kellen, thank you for sharing these exciting AI developments. And for the audience, thank you for watching. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.